क्लास सेवेंटी एट मीन्स टू नॉट एट फर्स्ट क्लास ऑफ चैप्टर सिक्स पी एल सी एंड एम ई एम एस फर्स्ट वी विल डिस्कस एम ई एम एस माइक्रो इलेक्ट्रो मैकेनिकल सिस्टम्स सो इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड मैकेनिकल पार्ट ओके बट वेरी स्मॉल ओके सी वी हैव सेंसर्स एंड एक्चुएटर्स इन a mechatronic systems in a mechatronic system we have sensors and actuators mainly okay so these sensors and actuators will be very small very tiny of say micro electronics level you know in micro electronics means ic IC technology. There, in a single piece, very small volume, lots of transistors, diodes, capacitors, etc., are fabricated. So this is also like that. Okay, the advantages are many. These all are advantages. so small size all these things advantages are there so applications are plenty plenty of applications today in our mobile phone we have many of such micro sensors and micro actuators see a micro electro mechanical system okay it has a micro sensor okay now it senses and then converts that into the required signal it also has power supply power supply will be given it it will have terminals sometimes it may have in built battery and uh, we have output signals so this is the basic block diagram but in many cases the processor is also included in the mems package in such case a micro electronics block also will come here microstructures means uh, like they are also micro devices only but they are used for supporting these devices like for example we have neutrons in an atom they are used for supporting purpose only so all these things together uh, we get an mems device in short they are called as mems m e m s mems in your textbook this figure is given if you search internet you get this as most here power uh, this one uh, processor is also shown a difference between the ic technology and an mems device is an ic is a so fully solid state device there are no moving parts in an ic but in an mems device there can be holes cavity etc and also there can be moving devices 
Sometimes there may not be moving devices depending upon the requirement because it has to sense and actuate. For actuators, you need some moving device. So, MEMS device uses the similar fabricating technology used in IC, that is microelectronics. Most used device is silicon. Okay. And we also have other devices. All these things. So, the manufacturing methods of uh, this MEMS uh, technology, MEMS device is called as micro machining or micro manufacturing. These MEMS devices or micro electro mechanical system are called as micro machines. In Europe, they are called as, it is given there, you can search in the notes, okay. So, here the manufacturing technology is called as micro manufacturing. So, there are three types, bulk micro machining, surface micro machining, and uh, lithography or liga process. Okay. See, in an IC technology, we have a thin layer of silicon, okay, on which some other device P type silicon is uh, deposited. Next N type, P type, however you need, you keep on adding like that. So, here you have two types of uh, methods. One is called as subtractive method, another is called as additive method. Suppose, say, you need a device of 5 inches just for you. Okay, for you to understand. What we, what we can do is, we can take 10 inch size block and keep on cutting it such that we get 5, it is reduced to 5 inches. That is called as subtractive method. You are cutting, that is called as etching method. Removal of a part and one by one, okay, from a bulk substrate means say 10 inch size block. Another method is called as surface micro machining. Say to get 5 inches uh, device, you can have take 1 inch device, another 1 inch device, you keep one over the other means deposit one over the other such five devices five blocks of one inch you will get five inch block so that is called as surface micro machining this is addition of say one inch block to five inches the bulk micro machining means uh, removal, cutting, etching method. Now, another thing is there which is called as high aspect ratio micro machining. It uses uh, the pattern methods. Okay. Uh, it has something say like electroplating, photography, everything is there. Anyhow, uh, in, I have not gone into detail of these things. You can write these three as it is. Right. Next, 
we have to study MEMS accelerometer. Before that, let us see some videos. Diabetes, you can use an insulin pump to control your pump is a battery powered device used to deliver rapid acting insulin to the body through a catheter, replacing the need for periodic injections. The parts of the device include a battery powered pump, a disposable reservoir of insulin, and a computer chip programmed to deliver precise dosages. To help maintain See, this is an insulin insulin pump. Okay. It is, it has insulin uh, in a tube like uh, material. You will see here. Contain a consistent glucose level. And uh, the MEMS device here will give, will deliver required level of insulin to the body. For example, say you just imagine. A very small tube inserted into our body. It is a very small diameter. Just imagine a mosquito when inserts its needle on our skin. We do not feel it at all. There is no pain at all. After it leaves and only we recognize it. Okay. That is because of some... Uh, Mosquito releases some chemical also. Otherwise, there is no pain. Even when an ant bites, it releases formic acid. The pain is not due to bite of ant. It is due to the release of acid. Okay. That is uh, different. Okay. Now, here the needle will be so small. Means like the needle of a mosquito. Some microns. So, this will deliver the required level of insulin to the body through that micron. That is what is being explained here. Instead of giving insulin injection once or twice in a day regularly, you can have this insulin pump. It will deliver continuously throughout the day into our body. You can keep this or fix it onto our belt. Level, you can program the pump ahead of time for continuous insulin delivery 24 hours a day. An insulin pump can help you adjust your blood sugar immediately. You can also program the pump to deliver larger bolus doses of insulin right before eating to accommodate or cover the amount of carbohydrates you are about to eat. Once you have determined your glucose level with a glucose meter, you can program your pump to send the correct amount of insulin into your body. See, this is the glucose uh, blood sugar level checking machine. Okay. Once you check your uh, the blood, uh, blood, it's also kept here. Okay. Insulin is loaded in this uh, tube. After checking the blood sugar, we can program, means set how much uh, units or how much uh, uh, drops of insulin should be delivered to the body. You can program. To send the correct amount of insulin into your body, insulin travels from the pump through an infusion set, including a flexible tube attached to a... This is a needle. You can see here. Soft plastic cannula inserted... This is called as cannula. Okay, cannula means very, very tiny needle like mosquito uh, when it bites the cell. Just under the skin. Using an insulin pump may help you lead a more flexible lifestyle while helping you maintain a more consistently stable glucose level. Studies show that regular monitoring and maintenance of glucose levels help prevent long-term diabetic complications such as blindness, kidney disease, heart disease, and glucose level is a battery powered device used to deliver our device used to deliver rapid acting insulin to the body through a catheter replacing the need 
An insulin pump is a battery-powered device used to deliver rapid-acting insulin to the body through a catheter, replacing the need for periodic injections. The parts of the device include a battery-powered pump, a disposable reservoir of insulin, and a computer chip. A dis See, this is the insulin uh, syringe where insulin is uh, loaded. You can insert this into the machine, which is battery-powered. Disposable reservoir of insulin and a computer chip programmed to deliver precise dosages. To help maintain a consistent glucose level, you can program the pump ahead of time for continuous.